Hi, I'm Jessica Baim, Phoenix City Hall reporter for AZ Central in the Arizona Republic, and I am joined by Mayor-elect Kate Gallego. Kate, I know it has been a long campaign, and I'm sure it was a late night last night celebrating your victory, so we really do appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. And speaking of long campaign, I mean like 18 months long. Uh, how did it feel this morning to know that you know you finally are able to start this position that you've been asking voters to give you for more than a year? When you file to run for mayor, you have to resign. And I'm so looking forward to getting back to Phoenix City Hall. I love the work we do at City Hall. I've missed being ser serving in public office and, and working with our great city employees. and the community, so I'm looking forward to, to getting back to work. Great, and you know, the end of this campaign got a little a little negative, and there were many um, negative attack ads waged against you. you know, why do you think there, at the end, there were people willing to, to spend so much money to try to keep you from this position? We really try to be, I try to be an advocate for everyone in this community and think mm -hmm. about everyday Phoenicians, not the special interests. That threatens some people. A lot of the attacks at the end were dark money, so they were from an anonymous organization mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. I don't know who was spending the money against me, and I hope you'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> me too. Um, and you're absolutely right. We don't know who, who a lot of the people were that were funding those. We do know that the, some of the police and fire unions uh, did spend money against you. The Arizona Police Association president there at the end was begging his words for people not to vote for you. As Mayor, you have to work with the police department, the fire department, and all the unions as well. How do you plan, how do you see yourself mending that relationship? When we were honored to be supported by the Phoenix Police mm -hmm. Sergeants and Lieutenants Association, which represents hundred, hundreds of Phoenix police officers. I've already been in touch with them about how we can hit the ground running to make sure we have a safe place to call home. So I think they'll be my allies as we build those bridges. We all live in Phoenix and want the best for our city. So I'm committed to making sure we look out for the better interests of the city and put politics aside, and I suspect they'll be willing to meet me there. Great. And speaking of mending bridges, the city council has been a little, uh, there's been some discord, a little bit of hostility. Um, how, how can you get back to the council and restore some civility and maybe some harmony to our council? I believe I'll be able to work with everyone on the city council. We all ran because we want to make this city a better place. And I'm going to sit down with each council member individually. I'm going to talk about what I learned during this campaign and learn what they believe the priorities are. Most of the decisions we make at the city of Phoenix are still unanimous. So we agree on more than we don't. I think debate is healthy. We just need to make sure it's not personal. It's not attacks on people's character, but differences of policy. If we can have real disagreements over issues, that will make us stronger and we'll have a better result in the end. We just have to make sure we stay civil. Sure. And you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be sworn in next Thursday and you're gonna be walking into budget season, which is so fun for all of us and uh, that cover city politics. Uh, you know, the, the city last week said that they're projecting about a $50 million surplus, which is certainly um, better than a deficit, but that's not a whole heck of a lot of cash to work with. You know, as you walk into the budget season, what are some of the things you're hoping to accomplish? Well, I'm committed to making sure we're fiscally responsible. I, throughout this campaign, talked about the times when I haven't wanted to raise taxes, and I think that mattered to voters. At the same time, we have to be investing. We are the second fastest growing city in the country. We have to plan ahead and think long term. One of the commitments I've made is to not just think about this budget year, but to think about the next generation. I would say elected officials often don't think beyond the next election, and I'm going to do my best to change that. Uh, I believe we have a very bright future in front of us, and tomorrow's the day we should start planning. Well, we're going to need to. <laughs> and so, you know, are there any other, you know, first priorities that you're, you're hoping to uh, get running on? Before I ran for office, I worked in economic development, trying to bring better jobs to the Valley. That's always been a passion of mine. I want to push the city towards knowledge economy jobs, high wage jobs. We need to be really thinking about making sure we, we can withstand a recession. There's some 
uh, disturbing signs from the national economy. Mm -hmm. Phoenix needs to be prepared to continue to have sustainable growth regardless of what's happening at the national level. Definitely, and as you know, I will be there every step of the way to cover your transition, and we look forward to that. So thank you so much for being here. Wonderful, thanks for having me. And please make sure to follow our coverage on azcentral.com.